Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Building Integrity. My name is Sam and I really wish that we were going out today to shoot up on the roof of these high-rise condominiums on the Gulf of Mexico here in Southwest Florida because the weather we have been having lately is absolutely beautiful. Today is probably the finest weather day we've had all year long, but sadly the clips that are making up this video were shot some of them two months ago, some of them two weeks ago. Today I'm just in the studio doing the introduction. I wish I was outside, but we're going to take you up on the roof anyway to look at uh, swing stage rigging. Now you may be asking yourself, what is a swing stage? Well, a swing stage is that big basket looking thing that's made out of metal, hangs off the side of a high rise building. Uh, you may have seen a swing stage on TV, a lot of times window cleaners in big cities are, you know, sitting outside of the office building washing the windows while the people inside are sitting at the boardroom table having a meeting. So those people are on a swing stage. Uh, we use them a lot in our industry for painting projects, for replacing windows, which is what the guys are doing that we're going to see later. So in this video, we're going to examine the components that go together to form uh, all of the infrastructure needed for a swing stage, uh, as well as the safety systems that are designed to keep you from uh, falling off the side of the building or falling out of the swing stage, or to keep the whole thing itself from falling down. So uh, without further ado, here's a video introduction to the basics of swing stage rigging and safety systems. Hope you enjoy. Much brighter up here, but I like the views. So let's go check out the rigging that they put up here. And I'll kind of explain some of it and uh, what the different components are. So this is like your typical roof beam uh, assembly for cantilevering out the steel cables which hold the swing stages. And then those swing stages have motors on them that bring the swing stage up and down. The, uh, the rigging then is basically just a counterweight system. So you put these plates of, uh, of weight up here, you do a little bit of geometry between your fulcrum and where your dead weight is and where the cable is, do a little bit of math, and then you can support the swing stages safely with this rigging system. Should this rigging system fail for any reason, collapse, slide down, or whatever, then you've got these backup cables which come along and should tie off somewhere safe. All right, so I can't see where it goes down, but it, 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 it anchors somewhere down, probably down at the ground. There's probably another weight system to hold that to keep that from rolling over. Wherever that cable goes over, we should have a sleeve. You can see like on the power lines here, we've got these little sleeves, they protect the roof drip edge, but the steel cable doesn't have a sleeve. Now granted, there's not a lot of weight on it, but if that were to fail, that thing would just rip, rip through the roof like crazy. When we're looking at these and checking them out, we're just basically checking to make sure that the systems of redundancy are here that need to be here, um, that things are properly tied back and anchored. Again, a lot of these are anchored off the roof edge down below, so we'll have to see when we get off the roof, how those are done. But uh, the interesting thing I, I think a lot of people wouldn't probably think about is your power cord. So this black cord here is for power, to feed power to the swing stage and any tools you're using. Well, these power cords can get very heavy as they get very long. So you've got, they have them wrapped around uh, this roof vent. They've got them tied off to a, a, a wall anchor over there and uh, to get the weight off. You can actually see these power cords braided and wrapped up here on the, onto these anchors as well to get the weight off of them and to support them so that the cord doesn't come down and collapse on you while you're trying to work. These ropes are for the life safety lines. So when you ride the swing stage, the swing stage is suspended between these two beams and when you ride that swing stage, you're going to tie off to one of these lines with your own safety harness while you're on the swing stage so that in case something catastrophic happens to the swing stage and it collapse, you can hang from the cable line. And again, this cable line, it has this yellow sock on it. 
to protect the roof. It has one at the other end, and that should be tied down securely to another anchor point on the other side to support your weight. One of the things you want to look for when you're checking out this rigging, you want to make sure that none of the rigging is touching each other, that they're interacting with each other. You don't want to tie one off to another. You don't want to use one as a redundant system for the other. They need to be all independently tied off and secured. You've got these safety lines. See how close these safety lines are to each other. And they all go off the edge. And there's safety lines over there that are bundled together through the same sock to protect the roof. So one of the things we're going to want to check for when we go down below is to make sure that each of those safety lines is independently tied off. Because again, we're talking about redundancy in, in systems. We don't, want, we don't want all the safety lines to be tied off to the same anchor point because if one fails, then they all fail. Take a look at this rigging setup. That's massive. We've got this structure jutting out in the middle of this high-rise tower that makes it very difficult to get a swing stage in front of it unless you can get that beam and weight system out there really far. But like any beam and weight scaffolding support system, rooftop scaffolding support system, the primary opera operating uh, components are your beam, your cable going down to the, to the swing stage, your emergency cable stay, which is coming off here at an angle, and then your primary cable, which should be going to your weights. And you can see we've got a huge bundle of weights over here supporting the back end of this beam. So again, the principles involved are, essentially it acts like a, like a seesaw or a fulcrum. And you have your counterweights at the back end. You've got the scaffolding that the beam sits on, which is essentially your, your fulcrum, that being your pivot point. And then you have your cantilever, which goes from your pivot point out to the edge. And then you have your supported load, which is the swing stage. So with a little bit of geometry, if you know that the swing stage cable needs to support, say, 2,000 pounds, and you've got an eight-foot cantilever, you can do some quick math and figure out the torque that's on that. And then you've got this span from the pivot point to where your, your uh, uh, weight system is, and then you can calculate what amount of weights you would need in order to support that load. But in order to make the fulcrum work and in order to get the beam far enough out, I mean, look at the huge scaffolding setup they have to build in order to make the fulcrum work. And you can actually see a large chunk of the scaffolding is actually itself cantilevered. So a system like this would have needed to have been uh, engineered, designed by a professional engineer. You don't just let the contractor sort of figure this stuff out as they go. A lot of the swing stages that we use or that we have contractors use a lot on, on a lot of our projects use the beam and weight system that we talked about previously. But uh, every once in a while you'll see the contractors opt for what we refer to as parapet clamps. So the cables for the swing stages, these are usually for smaller swing stages, are attached to these beams, but the beams themselves don't necessarily have a counterweight system. They're actually attached to the parapet wall. These aren't typically a preferred method. Obviously, you can see they're much easier to install than a beam and weight system. Uh, but in order to be able to use these things, you have to confirm and verify that the parapet wall itself is structural and structurally reinforced in order to be able to handle and support the weight of that uh, um, swing stage. So on a lot of these roofs, uh, particularly these high-rises, the flat roofs, these are our safety lines, which we've talked about before. 
that uh, people tie their uh, harnesses off to and their lanyards uh, down below when they're on the swing stage. If you look down here though, where it attaches to the building, a lot of these buildings have these concrete pillars and they have these uh, uh, steel eyelets that are wet set into them that are tieback points, anchor points for these lines. Um, some of these are rated to handle the actual steel cables and the backup lines for the rigging systems. Um, some of them though, uh, uh, contractors just prefer to use only the safety lines because, you know, frankly, an average human weighs a lot less than a 2,000 pound swing stage. So it's a lot less load on these anchor points. Um, these high rise buildings that have these points though, they have to have these things uh, inspected and certified uh, usually on a yearly basis. Um, and that's an OSHA requirement for any high rise building um, that has these uh, type of access or, or mounting points for contractors that are gonna use them uh, for staging the building or for window cleaners that need to hang off the side of the building to clean the windows. Um, so a lot of this stuff has to be done by an engineer or somebody who's OSHA certified to, uh, to, to inspect it all, verify it, and run any computations that might be needed. All right, well this is uh, like a typical swing stage. This is actually one of our smaller swing stages that we would see on one of our projects. Um, it's dealing with this uh, curtain wall of glass here on the building. Um, the cables and the scaffolding that we talked about on the roof, the counterweight system, all that stuff, those cables that are coming down, uh, they connect to these motor housings here. So this swing stage has two of these motor housings and then it typically requires two operators. Sometimes you can, you can link them together, but it typically requires two operators to operate each of these motors. They have up, down and brake functions, um, but the motor essentially just winds up the cable which draws the swing stage up and draws it down. We also looked at the, uh, the safety lines that were on the roof. These come down, they attach to rope grabs which are attached to lanyards, which are then attached to harnesses that the workers wear. That way, if anything were to ever happen to the swing stage, it were to fail for some reason, collapse, fall, or something like that, the worker is independently tied off to the building uh, using their own means of safety lines and uh, safety equipment. Uh, but otherwise, this is a, a big mainstay in our, in our uh, industry. These uh, swing stages are used on high-rise buildings all over the world. Uh, to get work done, because otherwise how are you going to get work done on the 20th floor, right?